Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create an export preset in Lightroom Classic. Export presets come in really handy if you find that you're often exporting images for the same reason, meaning you're always exporting images for use with Flickr, but then other times you're exporting images for use with Instagram. Flickr requires a specific size image or at least a specific size image on Flickr would work best, whereas a different size image might work on Instagram best. So you're always going into the export dialog and you're changing settings. Well, if you just create a preset, it will save you a lot of time. For example, I have this image here. I'm gonna bring up the export dialog box. I'm going to maximize it so we could see a little better. Now you can see over on the left-hand side, I already have some user presets. I created a copyright preset that just is an image that includes my copyright on it. Uh, I am Buffalo Images. I have a website, iambuffalo.us, that has images from Buffalo and the street photography specifically. And I have specific requirements for that uh, website that I need to export the image at a specific size and resolution and stuff. So I have that there. Uh, stuff from my personal website that's just onlinephotographytraining.com and a straight as is export. Sometimes I have a raw file and I just want to get it out of Lightroom and use it in another application. So I will just export it as is. Now for this demonstration, let's pretend I wanted to create a preset for Instagram. Instagram recommends that images uploaded to it be 1080 pixels on the long side. So typically you would come over here on the right hand side of the export dialog and you would start putting in those attributes. Now I'm going to export and I always export images to my desktop. So I'm going to leave it as is there. And if an existing file happens to be there with the same file name, it will ask me what to do. Now I do want to rename it. I don't want to use the original file name. So I'm going to rename it. But for my preset, I'm going to leave the custom text blank. That way, uh, when I do invoke the preset, I could give each um, time I do it, I could give that image a, its unique name. And I'm also going to keep a custom name sequence. Uh, that way, if I export more than one image, let's say, of this case, this was of a, a grain elevator, that image that was there a second ago. But if I have like six different images of that grain elevator, I could write grain elevator once in the custom text and it will export all six images and it will be grain elevator dash one, dash two, and so on for all those images. So I'm going to leave that there. I don't want to do a TIFF, so I'm going to do a JPEG. Um, I'm going to use the sRGB color space. I'll keep the quality at 100. Now I do want to resize this image. And as I alluded, um, Instagram recommends that the long edge of the image, whether or not it's horizontal or a vertical image, be 1080 pixels. So I'll put that at that. Now resolution doesn't matter at all. You could really put any number in there. I'll just leave that at 300. Um, in the past, Many times, including me, we recommended you put 72 in there if you were sharing it online to be viewed on a computer or a phone. It turns out that doesn't matter at all. And I've done a video on that and I'll have that video linked in the description below this video if you're interested in learning about resolution. So it doesn't matter at all is what I'm trying to say. I'm not going to sharpen for screen or any reason at all because um, typically I have my images sharp enough in Lightroom so I don't feel the need to sharpen them during the export. Now metadata, what do I want to include with the metadata? I'm just going to remove the location info. I'm going to re keep the person info even though Instagram technically strips out um, most of the metadata. I'm going to leave the person info just in case that image that isn't uploaded to Instagram on my system, somehow I share it somewhere else. It includes my copyright info. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm not going to use a watermark. And after export, I don't want to do anything. You could, of course, show it in Finder, open it up in Photoshop and so on. I'm not going to do anything. So these are the settings I am always going to use for Instagram. Now, Tomorrow, maybe I'll change these settings because I'm going to send an image off to a print lab. Or I'm going to change the settings because I'm going to upload the images to Flickr. Well, then when I go to send an image to Instagram again or 
export an image for Instagram, I'd have to come in here and enter this all over again. That's why we're creating the preset. Over here on the left-hand side, just click Add, and we're going to uh, give it a name, and I'm going to call it Instagram. As simple as that. And it's going to go in my User Presets folder, and we're going to click Create. Now you can see I have that preset there. And you now notice if I click on any of the other presets, like the I Am Buffalo uh, images, notice the long edge is 1024, my personal website, 2048, a straight as is preset, it's just the original image. But if I go back to that Instagram preset, all those um, attributes I just put in are saved. And I mentioned I could come in and give uh, a custom name each time. So now if I want to export this image, I could call it a grain elevator. Technically, it's not a grain silo, it's a grain elevator. Or I could say waterfront or Lake Erie or whatever I want to call it, right? I could do it here. Now, another advantage of the presets is it allows you to do batch processing of the same image. Let's pretend I want to export this image not only for Instagram, but for my personal website as well. Now you'll notice they had two different settings, right? Instagram was the long edge 1080 and my personal website was 2048. And let's say I want to do a straight as, straight as is export as well. I just want to export the unprocessed raw file or the, the raw file, let's say, because it will include the sidecar file, which includes the edits. So what I'll do is I'll just check that box for Instagram, check this box for personal website and check that box for straight as export. Now, when I go over here for the batch export on the right hand side, do you see how that changed? Like, let me undo those for a minute. You'll see now it just says export when Instagram is highlighted all by itself. But as soon as I check these boxes, it says batch export. Then when I click on that, we have the three different sections here. We have the straight as is export. It's asking me to choose a destination folder uh, for that. I'll put it on the desktop. Then we have the personal website. It's asking me to choose a destination for that. We'll put that on the desktop as well. And it's asking us for a name. And I'm going to say, um, you know, I don't know, grain elevator. All right. And it's going to give it a 0001 because that's what I use for my personal website, a four digit number. And then for the Instagram, it's asking me for a name and I'm going to call it grain elevator. All right. And it's going to give it a grain elevator dash one. And you can see right there. So now it's going to actually export this single image three different ways. One is a straight as, as is rust, uh, raw file, one for my personal website and one for Instagram. And I'll just export and you can see that it just ding, ding, ding three times and it exported it to my desktop. There is the image for Instagram. Now that's 1,080 pixels along the long edge. Here is the image for my personal website. That is 2,048 pixels along the edge, long edge. And I'm not going to open the raw file because it would just take long and it would open up in Photoshop. As you can see, Photoshop's the default um, uh, application, but you can see it's a straight raw file. It's a Sony camera .arw, includes the XMP file. So when I do open that, or if I did open that up into Photoshop, it will include the edits and it will open up in Adobe Camera Raw in Photoshop. Uh, so that is how you create a preset, uh, export preset in Lightroom. Now, again, if I just want to send this to Instagram here, let's minimize that because that's how I normally do it. Oh, I kind of screwed it up now doing that, didn't I? Yeah, let's do this. I kind of like this smaller. I don't know why, because I'm just used to it that way, I guess. Or out like that. Okay, let's do this. Like this. I just like it smaller. That's how I typically would do it. Now I'm going to click on my Instagram. I want to export this. Let's pretend I just didn't do it. I'm exporting it to Instagram. It's going to ask me a name. I'm going to give it a u unique name because the uh, I still have that image on my desktop. I'm going to waterfront. Oops. Okay. And it's going to be waterfront dash one, but it has all those attributes for Instagram and I'll just click export 
and it will export it for Instagram, um, which is the waterfront one right here. So that's how you create uh, export presets in Lightroom, something that comes in incredibly handy. And again, something I use all the time. And I think you will too, if you begin using them. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.